Hello and welcome back fourth and fifth graders. My name is Mrs. Green. Um, I am so glad you're here with me again today. I've been talking to a lot of teachers all over Seattle and the thing that I hear over and over and over is how much they miss you. We miss you so much and we would much rather be in class with you teaching you that way. Um, but we're also so proud of you. We're proud of you for continuing your hard work. We're proud of the way that you're handling this really strange situation. And we're doing it together, even if we're doing it together from far away. So we're proud of you, we miss you, and we can't wait to be back in the classroom with you. Today we're gonna continue our work with questioning, but today we're gonna do questioning in fiction. Before we get started, You'll need your materials. If you were able to pick up one of the packets, you can use your packet today. If you don't have a packet, that's okay. You'll just use some paper. And you'll need a pen or a pencil. You'll also need your turn and talk partner. Remember, because we're not in the classroom, your turn and talk partner, you can get creative with your turn and talk partner. You could use a family member who's around. You could use your mom, your dad, your little brother. You could use a pet, a dog or a cat or a fish. Or you could talk to someone you've always wanted to talk to in your imagination. Um, last week I used my old standby, Russell Wilson, uh, just because any conversation with Russell Wilson is a good one. He's an excellent partner. So you could call him up on the phone and talk to Russell Wilson about your thinking. The most important thing is, is that you are sharing your thinking out loud. Um, that will really help us continue this work. So as I said this week, we're reading fiction. Fiction is a, a genre that is made up stories. There are all sorts of types of fiction. Uh, there is realistic fiction, fantasy, fairy tales, science fiction. What all of those have in common is that they are a made-up story that happens in the imagination. One tool that we use when we're reading fiction is that we use the important elements that are found in all fiction. That helps us better understand what we're reading. All fiction has characters the people or the animals that are, the story is revolving around. They have a setting, the place that the story is taking place, where the story is happening. They have a plot, that's what's happening to the characters. And then the characters always face some sort of problem or some sort of challenges. We can use those elements to better understand what we're reading. Today, I am going to be reading a story called Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch by Eileen Spinelli. Last week, we learned that questioning is a powerful strategy for paying close attention to the text. We practiced wondering and then questioning in expository nonfiction. This week, we're going to practice wondering and questioning in fiction text. We're gonna be using a, a thinking tool called stop and ask questions as we listen to our story. It's gonna help us make sense of what we're reading. If you had a chance to get a packet, there are several copies of this in the packet. But if you didn't get a packet, it's no problem at all. You can make this yourself on a regular piece of paper. I didn't have the packet, so I'm using one that I created myself. I will stop several times during the reading to give you a chance to ask some questions and to jot them down. I'll give you a few moments to think and then I'll say stop and jot. This is Somebody Loves You, Mr. Hatch by Eileen Spinelli. Mr. Hatch was tall and thin, and he did not smile. Every morning at 6.30 sharp, he would leave his brick house and walk eight blocks to the shoelace factory where he worked. At lunchtime, he would sit alone in a corner, eat his cheese and mustard sandwich, and drink a cup of coffee. Sometimes he brought a prune for dessert.
at work, he would make, after work, he would make two stops at the newsstand to get the paper and at the grocery store to buy a fresh turkey wing for his supper. After supper, he read the paper, took a shower, and went to bed early. He keeps to himself. That is what everyone said about Mr. Hatch. What questions can you ask about the story right now? Stop and jot. Something that I was wondering about is why Mr. Hatch keeps to himself. So I'm going to write that as a question on my paper. Why does Mr. Hatch keep to himself? I'm also wondering, will he ever change his routine? He keeps to himself. That is what everyone said about Mr. Hatch. One Saturday, when Mr. Hatch stepped onto the porch with his dustpan and broom, he got a surprise, a package wrapped in brown paper. He had never spoken to the postman before. Thank you, Mr. Goober, he said. Mr. Goober smiled. You're welcome. I always enjoy delivering packages. Mr. Hatch tore the brown paper off. Inside was a white box, which he opened to find another box. This one was heart-shaped, all satiny red and pink bow on top. It was filled with candy. Something fluttered to the porch. Fluttered is the way that it moved. When I think of the word flutter, I think of a butterfly. So something moved down to the porch, kind of like a butterfly. It was a little white card. He picked it up. It said, somebody loves you. Only then did he remember that it was Valentine's Day. Mr. Hatch wondered and wondered. Now, who would send this to me? He was all alone. He had no friends. And yet someone, someone had sent him a valentine. Who? Who? He put the box on the coffee table and tried to do some dusting. But every time he left the room, he had to keep peeking to see if the box was still there. He dusted and dusted and the dust cloth seemed to whisper, somebody loves you. Somebody loves you. At last, he flung the dust cloth away and exclaimed, why, I have a secret admirer. And then he did something he had never done before. He laughed. He laughed and danced and clapped his hands, and then he took a piece of candy from the box and ate it. What question can you ask about the text right now? Stop and jot. I'm wondering who sent the box of chocolates to Mr. Hatch. Who sent him that valentine? And then he did something he had never done before. He laughed. He laughed and danced and clapped his hands. And then he took a piece of candy from the box and ate it. 
Mr. Hatch changed his shirt and found some old aftershave in the bottom drawer. He splashed it on his face. He picked out a yellow tie with blue polka dots and put it on. And then he went for a walk. Maybe, he thought, I will meet the person who sent me the candy. Of course, no one had ever seen Mr. Hatch wearing a tie or smelling of aftershave or smiling. So he got a lot of attention. Mrs. Weed tripped over her dog. Mr. Dunwoody nearly fell off his ladder, and little Tina Finn spilled all the toys out of her wagon. Mr. Hatch waved hello to them all. What question can you ask about the story right now? Stop and jot. I wonder if Mr. Hatch is gonna make friends with these neighbors. So now I'd like you to look over the questions that you wrote. And I'd like you to put a check mark next to each question that you think was answered by the story. What did you hear in the story that answered your question? Turn and talk to your partner. So a question that I asked, I asked um, if he would ever change his routine or if he was going to do things the same way every time. I heard in the text that he did once he got the valentine. He did things completely different. He went outside. He went on a walk. He um, put on aftershave and a tie. And everyone was really surprised by it. So in the story, I learned that, yes, he changed up his routine. We will revisit these questions in our next lesson. We're going to stop there for today. But in our next lesson, we'll look back at these questions. So make sure you put them somewhere safe so that you can get them for next time. Now, for IDR, I'd like you to read fiction this week. Any fiction genre will do as long as it is a made up story. So you could be reading a Harry Potter, you could be reading um, Dogman or any of any maybe graphic novel that you have at home. As long as you are reading a fiction story, which is a made up story. I want you to think back to the important elements of fiction I talked to you about at the beginning of the lesson. As you read today, I want you to think about what you are learning about the book's character, setting, and plot, as well as the conflicts or the problems your character faces. Today, I'm going to be reading one of my favorite books by one of my favorite authors. I'm going to be reading Matilda by Roald Dahl. The main character of Matilda is Matilda, and she is a curious young girl who loves reading and loves learning. I'm going to be learn reading, though, to learn more about Matilda, and I'm going to be reading to find out what kind of problems Matilda faces, what kind of conflicts she runs into. While I'm reading, I'm going to stop and I'm going to ask myself questions, and I'm going to jot them down on a stop and ask questions paper. After I read, 
I'll take a look over it and I'll see if I got any of my answers or any of my questions answered. I'd like you to do that during your IDR time today too. Remember that you'll do your best um, learning. You'll grow your brain the most if you read for 30 minutes every day. So I'd like you to be reading fiction for 30 minutes every day. You could pick any book you have in your house, any fiction book. If you're running out of books because you've been reading so much and you've been home for a while, there, remember there's lots of online resources that you could use at this time. Thank you so much for joining me today and experiencing the first part of this book. I look forward to reading with you next time. Happy reading.